Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Bill Hamilton coming to you again with part two of The Water Tower. <laughs> Let's do a quick review from part one. First of all, every large and small town and city in America that you know has a water tower. The purpose of a water tower, ladies and gentlemen, is due to surges and due to emergencies, the city wants to make sure that its residents still have water. When the electricity goes out and all of the lights are black, in the city and they don't have power. They can go to the sink and turn on the water. They can go to the restroom and turn on the toilet and they still have water because of the water tower. When the internet goes out and you don't have internet connection, you can still go to the sink and turn on the water because you still have water because of the water tower. <laughs> Hurricane comes through town. I mean, everything is black. As long as it didn't topple over the water tower, ladies and gentlemen, fires all over the place. Firemen show up to fight the fires. There's no power anywhere. Howsoever, as my uncle would say, the firemen still have water pressure because of the water tower. As we indicated in part one, the water tower is elevated high above the city because gravity produces pressure. So much pressure per square inch for every foot that it is elevated above the city. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, the water tower is not dependent upon power. The water tower is dependent upon gravity. And you see, gravity never goes out. And therefore, the parallel to your life from a wealth building standpoint, ladies and gentlemen, our formula called 10 1080. What did we say? 10% of everything that you earn should be set aside for savings and investment, i.e. the richest man in Babylon. 10% of everything I earn will be mine forever. So in our example, ladies and gentlemen, if you are saving 10% every week and every month and every year, that 10% is going in the water tower. You see, that's your water tower. That's your personal wealth building water tower. The city is smart enough to have a water tower. Manhattan, large cities, New York City, Chicago, LA, they're all smart enough to have a water tower. Why don't you? have a water tower. You got to have a water tower, ladies and gentlemen, because a water tower helps you through surges and emergencies. Well, let's define surges. What's a surge? Well, as we said in part one, when the community wakes up in the morning and they begin to brush their teeth, and they begin to take a shower, uh, they begin to cook and use all that water, ladies and gentlemen, the demand for water in the city is much higher than it is normally. The pumps aren't calibrated to supply that much water. It's called a surge. Well, where does the additional water come from? It comes from the water tower. <laughs> and then when people arrive back, in the evening after work, again, they might be watering the lawn, washing cars or what have you. There's another surge, okay? Again, the pumps aren't calibrated to supply that much water to the city. Where does the additional water come from? It comes from the water tower. And then as we said at night, ladies and gentlemen, when demand is very, very low, you're asleep. The city is asleep all night. The pumps continue to work and it refills the water tower. So ladies and gentlemen, the water in the water tower represented about 50 to 100 times as much water as in the average swimming pool, enough water to supply the city or the community or that area for at least a day. And if they need five water towers to do that, so be it. Some buildings in Manhattan, for example, have a water tower just specifically for that building. You should have a water tower specifically for your life. Let's talk about a surge, ladies and gentlemen. If it wasn't for the water tower, you see, the surge in the morning would be an emergency because the pumps can't generate enough water to take care of all of the people who need water every morning. 
if it wasn't for the water tower, the surge in the evening when people come home would be an emergency because the pumps aren't calibrated. They are not able to generate enough water for the surge. That would be an emergency if it wasn't for the water tower. <laughs> Where are you going, Bill Hamilton? Ladies and gentlemen, in our personal life, we have surges that many people are calling emergencies, but they're not emergencies at all. The problem is they don't have a water tower. Give me some examples, Bill Hamilton. Uh, when your transmission goes out and you need about $3,000 for a new transmission, that's not an emergency. That's a surge, ladies and gentlemen. If you had a water tower, you'd be able to take care of it right then and there. <laughs> I have a flat tire and I had to be towed and I had to come up with the cash money. That's not an emergency, Bill Hamilton. That should be anticipated. That's called a surge. If you had a water tower, you'd be able to take care of it right then and there. My children are sick, and I had to miss some days at work, and I had to miss my paycheck. That can be and should be anticipated. That's not an emergency. If you have a water tower, that's called a surge. Death in your family. We've all had that. You have to travel across the country on the spur of the moment. It was unanticipated. And when you arrive, you find that your relatives turn and look at you and say, we don't have enough money to take care of the funeral and the burial expenses. We've got to take up a collection. Most people consider that an emergency. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you right now, Death is not an emergency. Death can be anticipated. In fact, death had better be anticipated. That's a surge, ladies and gentlemen. If you had a water tower, you'd be ready for death when it shows up at your door because it's coming. That's a surge. That's not an emergency. You should have a water tower that enables you to take care of those surges. Ladies and gentlemen, I gave you an example. Part number one, how much money, Bill Hamilton, should I have in my savings account? How much money should I have in my water tower to take care of surges, to take care of what we call emergencies, but they're not emergencies at all. They're just surges. How much money should I have in my water tower? And I said to you, if you have a $10,000 automobile, you should have $10,000 in your water tower. If you've got a $30,000 automobile, you ought to have $30,000 in your water tower. If you've got a 50, 60, 7,000, $70,000 automobile, BMW, Mercedes, Lexus, Land Rover, whatever. Ladies and gentlemen, you ought to have 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100,000 dollars in your water tower. Therefore, surges that come about, and they're coming about, a surge is going to show up at your doorstep. I don't know whether it's going to be sickness. I don't know whether you're going to lose your job one day when they come in and tell you, we've got to cut back. But it's coming when it shows up. I want you to be able to sit back and relax. Not be torn up from the floor up. Because you say, Bill Hamilton, you prepared me. It's not an emergency. That's just a surge. I anticipated it because I've got my water tower. <laughs> oh, take it to the bridge, son. Take it to the bridge. Your water tower.